Starting quick up to 101 here. And today's shout out goes to Subtle Outfitting. Subtle Outfitting was first to say first in one of my recent videos. And this one's a shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quack Up to 101 here. And I have a review of a neat, interesting device for you today, folks. This is the Ruko, Ruko, not Roku, <laughs> Ruko, R111 uh, Remote ID Module. Very tiny little thing, very lightweight. Okay, what is this thing? Well, for people wishing to fly in the United States, and if you have a drone over 250 grams, and you don't have a local area, what's called a uh, FAA recognized identification area, FRIA, and in most cases, people don't, <laughs> you are going to require to, or be required to attach one of these devices or use one of these devices with your remote control aircraft or drone or whatever flies in the air, okay, <laughs> according to the FAA, okay? Now, it's not that hard to do, though, folks. Um, right now, uh, there, this is relatively inexpensive. It costs about under $40, I believe. Around $40 price range is what I'm seeing for this. Others are a lot more expensive. Um, it's very lightweight, this thing. It only weighs 14 grams, so it should, shouldn't be too hard on your greater than 250 gram aircraft. It should be able to lift that. Um, it is easy to set up to, and install this particular aircraft. Uh, very easy to set up. Uh, using the provided software that comes with it. It has a built-in GPS, and with that built-in GPS, if your drone or aircraft gets lost, say it flies away and crashes somewhere that you don't know, you can find this signal using the app, and this thing is transmitting, continuously transmitting, the, the location of your drone or aircraft, so that you'll be able to find it. So that's a big feature just in itself with that. It has a built-in battery that'll last up to five hours and it has a range of 500 to 800 meters via a bluetooth signal from this particular device long range bluetooth <laughs> so now the problem with this is uh initial setup with the faa okay the faa doesn't make things easy but i'm going to go over the steps that you'll need to do that um first you need to register with the faa i'm going to go into detail how do you do that as of uh uh, this date of 20th of August, I believe it is, uh, 2024. <laughs> okay, that'll change. That has changed in the past so many times, but I'm going to go over what, it, what the current way to register that is. Along with, uh, after you register with the FAA, the next thing you need to do is, uh, in, is to uh, set it up using the app. And that is really easy. Okay, very easy to do. But let's talk about the FAA. Okay, you will need to go on to the FAA's website and get yourself an account if you have a greater than 250 gram aircraft you're going to need to register yourself okay now i'm assuming okay for most of my viewers most of my viewers are beginner pilots um they are not commercial pilots they're not out there trying to make money off of this they're just beginner pilots and as such they do not need part 107 registration okay you can register as a recreational flyer under the, the exception for recreational flyers for the, you beginner pilots out there. So that's what I'm going to stress here. I'm not going to go over how to get to part 107. That's a lot more detailed, <laughs> a lot more requirements to do that. Okay, I'm going to go, stick with um, those recreational pilots, which are 99% of my viewers, okay? Uh, most of my viewers, they, they outgrow me, and they eventually may become um, uh, commercial pilots, but when they do, they're, they're not hanging around the Quadcopter 101 channel anymore. So let's put it that way. Okay, the first thing we do. Uh, let's talk about the instruction manual. The instruction manual is very good. It does go over the steps for a Part 107, how to register a Part 107, although there are quite a few steps missing in the description of this. But uh, let's go over how to do this as a beginner pilot or as a, a uh, recreational pilot. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the FAA's website. And um, that is um, faadronezone-access.faa.gov. And I'm going to include a link down below and also on the screen right here saying that. And once you go onto that page, you're going to click on Create Account. The next step is, after you enter your requested account information, click on Create Account again. There's a button saying Create Account again. The next step in is 
or the next window is click on add a service following that click on drone owners and pilots service selected and then click on add service next click on launch drone owners and pilots dashboard after that click on set up recreational flyer account then enter the, the requested data and pay a one-time fee of five dollars now you'll receive a, re a recreational pilots re registration number with that number you can use that with all of your uh, greater than 250 gram drones or aircraft whatever they are all you do is write write down on a piece of paper that number and tape it to one of your aircraft or all of your aircraft that, are, that weigh more than 250 grams you don't need to pay five dollars repeatedly just one time for a recreational pilot and that goes with this device too you don't need to pay for um, registering this device once you paid for your recreational pilot FAA number okay once you've registered with an account click on launch drone owners and pilots dashboard from the dashboard click on manage device inventory from the inventory page click on add device then enter the requested data and then click on add device that's it you're done you're done with the FAA yeah it was simple wasn't it doesn't the government make things easy <laughs> okay now that you have an FAA account and you've registered your device on the FAA's uh, page we need to set up this device and it's very simple okay to do that you're going to need the Ruko Ruko scanner app and I'm going to include a link to this uh, the app the Ruko scanner below but it also comes with the instruction manual there's a little uh, URL uh, code that you can or what, what do you call those um, <laughs> little scanner thing that uh, insignia that you scan on and it'll go to that web page but I'll include the web page below also so that you don't have a problem doing that but with the app open the app then turn on the module by pressing the power button and by the way let's go over the buttons real quick on this there's two buttons on this that's all there is okay power button and this is your settings button but you click on the power button uh, for three seconds then next you press on the smaller setup button for three seconds also a green light will start flashing rapidly and the device serial number should show up on the app under device under the apps device search screen click on the device box with that shows the serial number and then the setup screen should appear enter the requested data using your FAA registration number for both registration number and operator ID now this is for recreational pilots do that for enter it in both of those uh, fields along with the aircraft model that you wish to use it with say you got a, a um, P-51D, you just put P-51D, it's heavy <laughs> aircraft. So. Then also put the weight of the model if you know it. Um, if unknown, just enter 250 grams. And then enter the aircraft type, whether it's an air, air, airplane, uh, helicopter, multi-copter, whatever. Enter that type in. And then click Save. The module will remember this data. If you wish to use it with a different aircraft, just repeat the above steps that I just went over and simply enter the aircraft model weight and type and then click save again so it's very easy to just click on that settings button again hold it down for three seconds then use the app again to and you know modify the data if you need to do that um, after that that data has been entered just turn off the device and then attach it to your aircraft with the name Roku Ruko facing upward the reason being the GPS antenna is on the top of this thing and you want to point it toward the sky um, when you're ready to fly simply turn on the, the device and the right two green lights will alternate flashing um, the center light will turn steady once the GPS is ready to go once it has a GPS lock on and the farthest right light will continue flashing indicating that the module is transmitting data the module is then ready to fly now the Ruko scanner app is not necessary to use when flying your drone but it is a powerful app and it should and it shows not only the data from your drone but the data from other drones that may be in your vicinity 
You know, if you want to see if there's other drones in the air using a remote ID module, that app will show them and show where they are and who owns that drone. Okay. The app also includes a map view showing the location of you, your drone, and other drones in the area. So you can use the map view, map view to help find your drone if you get lost, if it gets lost. So that is the package. Let's go over what you get in the package. You get the user manual. Again, I recommend reading it in its entirety to see how to set it up and how to attach this device to your um, particular aircraft. Notice that they give you a ton of stuff to attach your uh, this to your aircraft. They give you some Velcro, uh, some double-sided tape. If that, that Velcro don't work, they give you a bunch of zip ties, little tiny zip ties to attach it, if you need, can use zip ties. And they also give you this little uh, watch <laughs> bracelet, this little bracelet thing that you can wrap around. If you've got it, something that you can wrap around and it has double-sided tape on it, then you can stick that on to, to hold the device too. So that's an interesting thing that comes with it. And you get this, the Roku uh, remote ID module, and you get the charger for that remote ID, which, by the way, charges through a, it has its own built-in battery, but it charges through a uh, Type-C USB connector. So that's the Roku module. Very nice. Again, there's only two buttons on it. One for power. You press it down and hold it down. Right now, it's searching for a GPS signal. I ain't going to find it here in my basement. And then this button here for setting up the um, device by holding it down like so for three seconds. And then right now, it's trying to set itself up using the app. The, at this, in this case, you'd open up the app, and this would show up in the app. But I'm not ready to do that, so I'm just going to turn it off. And it's still remembering the data that I've already entered into it. So that's the Ruko R111 remote ID module. Very easy to set up this device. Not so easy to get yourself a, an account on the FAA website if you haven't done so already. <laughs> but I showed you how to do it as of this date. And again, that's, that's changed so many times over the past couple of years, over the past few years. So I hope that um, they're going to get their act together and make it easy, easier to register yourself on their website, but I doubt it. It's the government, folks. <laughs> so, Okay, hope you enjoyed this review. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out. Hi, Quadcopter 101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.